Uh, thank you. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes, perfect. Okay. I share my screen. Uh, first of all, thank you to Rupul sir, Dharmendra sir, Amit sir to give me this opportunity. And is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Or just tell me if I'm able to uh, like when I move the slides, are the slides moving? Because sometimes yes, so yes. Okay. Yes, it's moving. Yeah. So good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Komodi, and once again, I would like to thank Kripal Sir, Dharmendra Sir, and the entire organizing team to give me this opportunity. Uh, so today, I'm going to speak about successful peripartum management in GDM, uh, and it would be a case. So here we have a 33-year-old Pammy Garuda. She was diagnosed with GDM at 21 weeks of gestation. Initially, she was advised only dietary changes, but her control was suboptimal, so she was put on basal bolus therapy. Uh, with the insulin therapy, she had excellent results. Uh, her fetal scan at 36 weeks was normal, and at 38 weeks, 5 days, she goes to the obstetrician with a complaint of labor pain since uh, 6 hours. Uh, and she also mentions that she had taken the night, uh, last night's basal dose. Uh, so on examination, as per the obstetrician, uh, she is in the latent phase with dilatation of the cervix less than 4 cm. So all in all, we have a patient who is a primary gravita, uh, who has GDM and who is in labor. So now our concern is what are her sugars? So if you look at her sugars, so this is a sugar chart. Uh, so these are the sugars which have been recorded throughout the labor. Like she came at around 8 a.m. and she delivered post 5 p.m. So as you can see, uh, initial up till from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. around, she was in the latent phase. You know, this is decided by the obstetrician according to the cervical dilatation and everything. And after that, she goes into the active phase. So in the initial phase, uh, that is a latent phase, her sugars are checked every two hourly. And as you can see, they are pretty much controlled, 108, 104, 96. And as you can see, there is neither requirement of insulin infusion nor requirement of dextrose infusion. She's doing pretty well on her own. And... Uh, once she goes into the active phase, you see there's a sudden dip in the sugars. The sugars dip from 96 to 68. And so this is what happens. So when the patient goes into active phase because of increased metabolic uh, dem demands, the sugars start falling or you can say the uh, requirement of some kind of dextrose increases. So once the sugars go to 68, uh, she is started on dextrose infusion, a very low dose of 5% at 100 ml per hour. So that is effectively just 5 grams of sugar in a complete hour. So then at 3 p.m. her sugar is again checked. It goes to 85. But we continue the dextrose infusion. But just to make sure that we are still in that very stringent um, range of 70 to 110, we also start her on insulin infusion. But that is also at a very low dose of 0.5 ml. So basically, the game is about balancing between insulin infusion and dextrose infusion to stay in that narrow range of 70 to 110. And then you see that her sugars are very well controlled, 85, 88, 84. And post 5 p.m., she delivers a healthy baby. So she de delivered a healthy baby of 2.8 kgs at around 5 p.m. Post delivery, uh, the doctor checks the sugars of the mother as well as monitors the sugars of the baby and it is observed that there is no neonatal hypoglycemia. So this is what we can call as a successful peripartum management of GDM. So when you have a case patient coming like this to you or to us, so what are the, what are the pertinent questions that come up? So first is what is the ideal time for delivery in a patient of GDM? Like at what week should the patient be advised delivery? Like if you are planning, say, induction of labor or a CS, what is the ideal time? Then when, the, say, if the patient is already in the labor, what are the glycemic targets that we are looking at? And how do we achieve these glycemic targets? And how often should the monitoring be done? And what to do immediately after delivery? So to answer these questions, we will look at three major guidelines. That is the RSSGI guidelines, the NICE guidelines, and the ACOG guidelines. So the NICE are the UK guidelines and ACOG are the American guidelines. 
So to look at to decide the ideal time for delivery, which is mostly done by the obstetrician. So RSSBI says that if there are metabolic or maternal or fetal complications, then you should take in a take in the delivery little early. That is elective birth before thirty seven weeks for women with type one or type two diabetes. It should be considered. But the nice guideline says that if uh, you, the the nice and RSSBI guidelines are pretty aligned. So you can say that. If the pregnant woman with type one or type two diabetes and and has no other complications, you can take the elective birth by induced labor or CS between thirty seven weeks and thirty eight weeks plus six days of pregnancy. And if woman with gestational diabetes, you can wait till or forty weeks plus six days, but no later than that, because as you progress in the Uh, in the pregnancy, the later you become, there is more chance of stillbirth because of uh, the osmosis and uh, osmosis which occurs at the chorionic delay. So because of that, you do not want to delay the delivery. And as per ACOG guidelines, it says that if the patient has diabetic complications, the delivery should be between thirty six weeks zero days to thirty eight weeks six days, and if it is well controlled. uh then up till expectant management can be done up till 39th week and if the patient is of gdm they're not type and type 2 you can even go up till 40 weeks so this was the ideal time for delivery now if you want to if you want to look at the intrapartum glycemic targets all the three guidelines are very similar and all of them suggest uh, the stringent target range of just 70 to 110 nice as a little It is little more lenient, then you can go from seventy-two to one twenty-six. So whatever we are doing to control our sugars, our target, ultimate target, should be that during labor, the patient's sugar should be between seventy and one one zero to prevent neonatal hypoglycemia. And how often do we, uh, how often do we measure the sugars in the later in the latent phase? The frequency can be a little less, and you can measure two hourly. But once the Active phase sets in. It is better to measure the sugars one hourly because there is sudden rise, there is sudden dip in the sugars. And how do we achieve these uh, targets during the intrapartum period? All the three guidelines have similar in a way that they suggest IV dextrose and insulin infusion. But as you can see, none of the guide uh, guidelines specifically give out. Like at what rate should the insulin infusion be, or at what rate the dextrose infusion be? So that is like uh, you know up to the discretion of the doctor. So like mentioned, most national endocrine and obstetric governing bodies have not published specific guidelines regarding the rates of uh, the infusions, and practice varies widely from institution to institution. So see, uh, this is uh, these are this is a protocol given by University of Cincinnati. So they have a very fixed protocol. Like that, if the sugar is between 100 and 120, keep the insulin at 0.5 unit per hour and uh, start the infusion, uh, dextrose infusion, 5% dextrose infusion at 125 ml per hour. So the uh, the doctors practicing there can be following these guidelines. But here we have a uh, uh, article published by the Indian Hatha which says that you can add six to eight units of conventional regular insulin or analog. Two five hundred ml dextrose normal saline, like you know, in the in the pint you can add the insulin, and that is how you can manage your sugars. But I personally feel that having two different infusions gives the doctor more control over how to manage the sugars. So it is better to opt for two separate infusions. So what are the key points when managing these patients? First things to remember is that maternal glycemia is critical to decrease the risk of neonatal hypoglycemia. And because neonatal hypoglycemia occurs in up to half of infants born to mothers with pre-gestational diabetes, that is either type one or type two, or between five and twenty percent of women with gestational diabetes, and these neonates are prone to severe neonatal hypoglycemia because of secondary hyperplasia of pancreas and hyperinsulinemia. Hence, it becomes very important to keep the sugars tightly under control between seventy to one ten. And what are the clinical pearls? Uh, come, when it comes to management, during the latent phase of labor, the requirement of insulin is stable. But during the active phase, due to increased metabolic demand, the insulin requirement goes down markedly. Uh, like what we saw in our case, like from eighty-five, it uh, dipped down to only sixty-four. 
and immediately after delivery postpartum insulin requirement further decreases as a result of the rapid decrease in diabetogenic placental hormone levels and when the baby is born if even if your sugars intrapartum were controlled please make sure to check the to monitor the neonates very strictly it should start immediately at birth and the uh, the rbs should be checked at 30 minutes 1 hour 2 hours 4 hours 8 hours and 12 hours to ensure that there is no hypoglycemia occurring because sometimes what happens is if the woman had uncontrolled diabetes throughout the pregnancy but has controlled sugar during intrapartum stage still there is a very high risk of uh, neonatal hypoglyc- uh, hypoglycemia because there is already been uh, uh, already been in hyperplasia occurring in the pancreas of the baby and if if in some patient plan it is always preferred to do the procedure early morning the patient needs to take a usual night dose of long acting insulin and the morning dose of bolus insulin has to be withheld and again you can manage your sugars with iv dextrose and iv insulin and once the patient is discharged the patient should be advised to take a 2 hour 75 gram oral glucose test uh, in the early postpartum period and that is around 4 to 12 weeks delivery yeah that is all thank you